Hey folks, in this week's Vaughn Tips, we're going to talk about something that I'm really excited about, which is web performance. More specifically, we're going to talk about how we can use Webpack's code splitting to make our app both load faster and feel faster. I'm going to use a Vaughn Infusion application as the base for this uh, video, but everything that we're going to cover here will work in any other framework that uses uh, Webpack for bundling. So let's jump right into code and see how we can make this happen. The project that I'm using is built with start.vaden.com. In addition to the basic hello world and about uh, pages, I'm adding a dashboard page here because it has a bunch of these more heavy components like charts and a data grid and, and things like that. I've uh, gone in and changed the UI technology to TypeScript and HTML so we get a Vaden Fusion project. And I've gone ahead and already imported this into my VS code. I've defined uh, Webpack chunk names for all the different views here just to make them a little bit more human readable in the browser dev tools when we get there. But before we can start optimizing this, let's go ahead and start it up. So normally you'd start a Vaden uh, Fusion application just with the Maven keyword, but in this case we're going to run it using production mode because that one will give us a production optimized build of the front end bundles. During development time, those bundles can be several megs, and it's not really realistic in terms of, uh, get, or it doesn't give you a really realistic idea of how big the bundles will be in production. So it's better to do the optimization work with production mode enabled. The problem with production mode is that it doesn't come with the live reload uh, and kind of write live compiling that we have in, in the development mode. So for that, we're going to start Webpack with the watch mode separately. That way we kind of get a similar uh, similar experience with Webpack running the build every time we make a change to our code. All right, so with these completed, let's hop into our browser and right into the application. So I'll refresh here and make sure that we have the app up and running. It does seem to work, so let's go between the different views, make sure everything works. And I'll go back to the root and open up the browser dev tools. So in the browser dev tools, I'm going to use the network tab as the main tool for making these optimizations. So this is a good place for us to really get a feel for what's happening under the hood. To make things more apparent, we might want to throttle the network down to like fast 3G in this case to make it a little bit more apparent what's happening when we load the application. So before we start optimizing anything, let's do a baseline test run and just see what's happening when we load this application. So reload the page and let's see what's happening here. So what happens here is we make a request for the index page. Once that's downloaded, we download the, the main app bundle. Once that's downloaded, it downloads the main bundle here and all of its dependencies. Once the main bundle is downloaded, it downloads the hello world view, which is this view here, and its dependencies. So if we filter this by just JavaScript dependencies, we'll see that we're making seven JavaScript requests and almost 100K of JavaScript to show this one view. The biggest problem here uh, is really the amount of different server round trips that we need to do. So. We do one server round trip for the index page, then we do one for the bundle, one for the main view, uh, the main view here being the app shell, the app layout here with the sidebar and, and the menu, and then one more view, uh, one more call for the view itself. So that's quite a lot of kind of back and forth for just getting the basic kind of default view that we want to see. So let's go into the code and see why that's the case and how we can fix it. So here I'm in the index file where the routes are defined and looking at the route definitions, it becomes pretty apparent to us uh, why that's the case. So each view here has an action, which is an asynchronous function, which imports that specific views uh, dependencies or it imports that view and the view itself will then import its dependencies. So it means that we're splitting out every single view and every single child view into a separate bundle. Now, 
in this case, if we're looking at the paths that we have, so we have the empty path and the empty path, uh, this being a child of that. So this is, we, we know for a fact that main view will always get loaded. And by default, we know that the hello world view will get loaded. Now, knowing this, it makes sense for us to include the main view and the hello world view into the date uh, default bundle. That way we don't have to go back and forth to the server to fetch something that we know almost certainly that we'll always need. So in order to fix this, I'm going to do uh, move the imports up here. So for main view and for the hello world view, I'm going to move these up up here into the header. And since we're importing these in the index file, they're going to be part of the main bundle. And with those imported, I can go and delete all these actions because we're no longer dynamically importing these. So let's save that. So if we go into the webpack here, we can see that it's built and we go back to our browser and again, reminding ourselves that we had seven requests, essentially four back and forths. If we count the initial, uh, initial, uh, call for the index page. So let's refresh this and see what we have right now. You can see that now, since we included everything we know, we always need on the initial request, we only call uh, or fetch one single JavaScript resource, which is the main bundle. And we do one request. We actually ended up saving some uh, JavaScript as well, just because we didn't incur the overhead of the asynchronous uh, fetching and, and the bundle splitting. So the first lesson here is try to include things that you definitely know will be needed in order to kind of start the application into the main bundle. That way you don't incur back and forth, uh, overhead in terms of latencies. And there's also a small cost associated with splitting out these small bundles. So by combining all of these into the main bundle, we reduced that overhead and ended up actually loading less. So, uh, essentially what we saw here was a misuse of code splitting in action that we took care of. Now let's look at a case where code splitting actually does make a whole lot of sense. So if we go into our dashboard view here, you'll notice that that takes a little while for us to load with the uh, 3G simulation on because that goes in and fetches all the dependencies for the charts and the data grid and everything. So in that case, it makes a whole lot of sense for us to defer the cost of downloading those assets until we actually know somebody wants to go to the dashboard view because there's a good chance that somebody comes into our application and never goes to that view. And it doesn't make sense for us to include those in the main bundle and have every single user incur the cost of downloading that JavaScript that they may not ever, ever need. Okay. So, so far we've talked about code splitting on a route basis. So on a view by view basis, let's take a look at one, uh, kind of one level lower, how we can do code splitting within a view. So here I have a empty about view. And let's add some components here to see how, how this works. So I'm going to change this view to have a editor. So let's do an H1 edit some stuff. And then we're going to use a VOD and rich text editor. It's not a hugely big component or anything, but it's a good example of how we could defer the loading in different ways. So I'm going to, first of all, just import it in the head here. So this is going to include it in the about view, uh, view bundle. So we'll do VOD in rich text editor like that. We'll save and we'll add it to the template here. Modern rich text editor like that. So we'll go into the browser and wait for Webpack to build. And hopefully what we'll see is a rich text editor here. Now let's go, since this isn't a very big component, let's slow down things even further to make these a little bit more apparent. So I'll refresh again and we'll see what happens. So we are downloading the main bundle. We're downloading the about page bundle it takes a while, takes a while. And then all of a sudden we get everything all at once. 
Now, if we imagine that this component itself was a little bit heavier, it might make sense for us to split that out. So let the view render and then uh, upgrade this in place, meaning that the user gets some feedback of the view happening uh, quicker, and that makes the application feel faster, even though at the end of the day, uh, it takes roughly the same amount of time to do everything. So let's let's see how we can do that. So instead of importing it right here in the view bundle, I'm going to move this into a lifecycle callback here uh, after first updated. So once lit element has done the first pass of rendering, it will call first updated. And here we'll do a dynamic import uh, for that rich text editor. Web components are nice in the sense that we're able to use the uh, tag names themselves, even though they haven't been imported. And once they get imported, they will get upgraded in place. So if we save this, uh, let's take a look at how that changes. So right now we had, essentially we downloaded the about page bundle. And once that came in with the rich text editor and everything, we got all of this in one go. So let's refresh. And what we should see now is that we get the heading first. Let's see. Yep. So we get the view visible first, then it starts downloading the rich text editor. And once that's done, it comes in. So that's a good pattern. If you have some kind of more heavier component you need to load, say like a map or something, it might make sense for you to kind of display the view quick, just to give users feedback that yes, something is happening. And then you start downloading that and upgrading it in place um, uh, to, to make it uh, feel a little bit faster. Now, a, another way we could do this is if it's something that's not necessarily needed all the time, maybe only some users use it. In that case, it doesn't even make sense for us to download it after the first render, we might want to tie that to a button click or some other event that indicates that a user actually wants uh, to use this component. So whether it's like a dialogue that opens with some heavy components, or in this case, we can add a button to load this editor. So I'll add a button here. I'll just use a plain HTML button here, uh, add a click listener on it, and we'll call uh, this dot load editor like that. We'll change this to load editor. And let's give it a caption, edit content. Okay, so what we're expecting to see now is that when we load the page, we'll get the heading and we get a button that allows us to opt in to loading the editor. So if we have some piece of functionality, like I said, that only is needed every once in a while, not necessarily every user needs that, we can defer the loading, kind of defer the cost of loading that until we are absolutely certain that somebody wants it. So in this case, we can see that the about bundle is really small. It's less than a kilobyte. And when we click on the edit content here, that's when we start actually downloading the rich text editor. And once it's downloaded, it gets shown. All right, so that's the basics of doing code splitting. Now, I really want to kind of implore you not to go overboard with code splitting. So I would recommend that you start with just doing code splitting on a view level. So make sure you have the kind of basic homepage getting loaded eagerly and defer the load of any heavy heavy views that aren't necessarily going to get used into separate bundles. Then if you identify that some views are loading slower than you would want them to load, you can start looking into these other ways that we're looking at. So maybe you want to defer the loading of a heavier component until after the initial render, or maybe you want to defer the load until somebody actually clicks a button or indicates in some other way that they want to use that component. All right, so I hope that was helpful for you. If you have any questions on the contents here, ask them in the comments below. If you have any ideas for new videos you want to hear, let us know. And be sure to subscribe to the Vaden channel. We have new videos coming out every week with helpful tips like these. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.